Hello and welcome to another photosynthesis video and in this video we're going to be looking at the light dependent reaction as if you hadn't had enough of electron transport chains after doing oxidative phosphorylation. So here's what we're going to look at today. We're going to understand the role of chlorophyll and water in the light dependent reaction and we're going to differentiate between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So here's the first part. The light dependent reaction is going to occur in the chloroplast. More specifically, it's going to occur in the thylakoid or the grana stacks. And that's where we've got the highest density of chlorophyll, one of our photosynthetic pigments. And it's a physical process. It doesn't require any enzymes. It's not a chemical reaction. It just requires light. So this is what happens. We have two photosystems labelled here as PS2 and PS1. We have two electron transport chains that work in the same way as oxidative phosphorylation works. Um, however, in this case, we've got our first electron transport chain, which is responsible for producing ATP, and our second electron transport chain is responsible for doing something slightly different, as we all see. So, first of all, we're going to have a look and see what happens step by step. So we're going to imagine that a photon of light has just struck photosystem 2, which causes it to become excited. And when excitation occurs, two high-energy electrons are released, and they move to an electron transport chain. And they're passed down from carrier to carrier, which releases a small amount of energy that the electron transport chain can use to produce ATP. This is much like oxidative phosphorylation, but you do not need to know the detail. So once this has happened, the electrons move on and they go to replace two electrons that are now being released um, from photosystem one that has now been struck by a photon of light. So here we go. Those two electrons from photosystem one are now released. They've been excited and they, they move upwards into another electron transport chain. They move down and before we have a look at what happens on that electron transport chain, one more thing has to happen. We have to split water, and this process is called photolysis. So a photon of light is going to hit water, and it's going to split it into its constituent parts. We've got, that should be half O2, so molecular oxygen, two electrons and two hydrogen ions, two protons. The protons are going to move up to join with the two electrons from the second electron transport chain, to help reduce NADP to NADPH. This is a coenzyme that becomes reduced and is essential for the next part of the photosynthesis reaction scheme. The two electrons from the water, well, they go to replace the two electrons that were lost from photosystem 2 when that was initially stimulated by light. So there's our NADPH. We can see our two key products from this are ATP and NADPH. Oxygen is a waste product, but it can go off to be used in cellular respiration. Now, realistically, all of these th three stages happen at once. So we can summarize this by looking at the movement of the electrons. So electrons are constantly replacing those that have been lost from the previous donor. So we have to imagine that both photosystem 1, photosystem 2, and water are all struck by light simultaneously, and the electrons move on and replace. There we go. So let's have a look at more detail on photolysis. Well this is the splitting of water by light. And the protons from this help reduce NADP, which is that coenzyme, to the reduced form which is NADPH. This is essential for the next part of photosynthesis. Electrons that are yielded from the splitting of water replace those that have already been lost by photosystem 2. Oxygen is a waste product and it can be used in cellular respiration. So let's have a look at the way that ATP is produced. And there are two methods for this. Firstly we have non-cyclic photophosphorylation and this happens all the time. And This involves the energy being produced from the electron transport chain uh, as electrons move from protein to protein. Now we also have cyclic photophosphorylation, which occurs when there is plenty of NADPH already in the uh, in the chloroplast. 
Now in this type of photophosphorylation, electrons are going to move from photosystem 1, which is the second photosystem, and they're going to go back around the first electron transport chain again, producing more ATP. We can see that here. So light hits photosystem 2, electrons are excited and travel down the first electron transport chain, producing ATP. Light then hits photosystem 1, and two high-energy electrons are then released, but instead of going down the second electron transport chain, they go back to the first one. And they pass down that electron transport chain one more time, producing more ATP. And this is cyclic photophosphorylation. So the key products from the light-dependent reaction of photosynthesis are NADPH and ATP. And they're essential for the next stage of photosynthesis, which we will look at in another video. Oxygen is a waste product, but that's going to be used for cellular respiration, so it is quite useful to have kicking around. Okay, once again, here's some further reading. This is a really good light-dependent reaction fact sheet from the guys over at A2 Biology 101. It's a fantastic revision blog. I'll put a link in the description. But for now, here's our summary. Or it would be if there was a title. So the light-dependent reaction occurs in the chloroplast. It's a physical reaction, not chemical. It produces ATP and NADPH, which are required for the next stage of photosynthesis, and ATP production can be non-cyclic or cyclic. And there's my animation to finish things off. Well, thank you very much. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.